Hands now! We've never felt so betrayed. Exterminate all rational thought. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 not-so-literal movie titles. Jesus, I feel sick. For this list, we'll be looking at movie titles that, for all intents and purposes, didn't feel exactly accurate. Which way do we go? Follow that stone! They can't all be as straightforward as the assassination of Jesse James by the coward Robert Ford. Me and the kid will walk into that bank just before noon. Number 10, 12 Monkeys. You aren't going to hurt us, are you, Mr. Cole? No, sir. What could this be? Perhaps a family-friendly Pixar-type movie? Maybe something like Madagascar. You hire mammal. Hmm? Can you read? In all fairness, no title could have prepared audiences for the strange tale of dystopian, time-traveling, neo-noir madness that was 12 Monkeys. The world belongs to the dogs and cats. We live like worms. <laughs> We just need the information! This is filmmaker Terry Gilliam at his strangest. Scratch that. Brazil is Terry Gilliam at his strangest. But this is a close second. Can you fix it? No, I can't. But I can bypass it with one of these. Charged with collecting information on a deadly virus that nearly wiped out the human race, James Cole, played by Bruce Willis, is sent back in time with little to go on, apart from the fact that a group known as the Army of the Twelve Monkeys may have been involved. I am simply trying to gather information to help the people in the present trace the path of the virus. Don't worry if you couldn't guess that from the title. We're pretty sure no one can. Want to hear the monkey speak? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Number 9. Pineapple Express. Hands down, dopest dope I've ever smoked. When you see the title, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Is it, hey, I bet that's referring to a particularly potent strain of marijuana that will entangle a couple of slackers in an action-packed adventure involving murder, intrigue, and a whole lot of drug consumption? No, us either. It's almost a shame to smoke it. Is Pineapple Express hilarious? Undeniably. And we all wish we could get more of a sequel than the brief teaser we got in This Is The End. But based on the title alone, we expected this to be about a tropical commuter train and the wacky hijinks of the passengers and crew, or possibly a more sober, reflective sequel to Wes Anderson's The Darjeeling Limited. Basically, we expected a train. I think we should stay. Why? Because I'm in the dumpster already. Number 8. Reservoir Dogs. Why can't we pick our own colors? No way, no way. Tried it once, it doesn't work. Whatever you expected going into this, if you hadn't seen the trailer, we can pretty much guarantee you did not see this plot coming. There's a slight difference. Maybe we're at fault for thinking every film title with an animal in it is a family-friendly comedy, but Reservoir Dogs makes us think of a bunch of streetwise dogs who live in an abandoned reservoir, venturing into the city to stir up trouble and steal meat from the surly butcher. Think all dogs go to heaven or homeward bound. What is that? You got me. I think it's a squirrel having a really bad hair day. Whatever your guess was, you probably didn't think it was a crime thriller about a jewelry heist gone wrong. You're saying that Mr. Blonde was going to kill you, and then when we got back, he was going to kill us, take the satchel of diamonds and scram. I'm right about that, right? That's correct. That's your story. And you definitely didn't expect this. Dark. Gritty, violent, and unapologetically offensive. Why is it that every n I know treats his woman like a piece of shit? Number seven, The Constant Gardener. There are millions of people that all need help. With ambiguously titled films, you're not really given much to go on, so you can't be too upset to discover your expectations were off base. But when straightforward, descriptive titles mislead us, how can we not feel betrayed? I thought you spies knew everything, Tim. Only God knows everything. If you call a movie The Constant Gardener, you better give us a character who constantly gardens. Or at least does gardening-related activities way more than a normal person. For a diplomat, you're not a very good liar. Well, I haven't risen very high. If that plot seems boring, throw in a twist. Like he's constantly gardening because he's actually a hitman who buries all the bodies of his victims in his immaculately maintained garden. I didn't know that killer. Silly sod was besotted with her. But that's the way it works with corporate murder. But no. The actual movie is about a man trying to solve his wife's murder, and Ray Fine's character gardens sporadically, at best. Something wrong? Number six, Million Dollar Baby. If I'm too old for this, then I got nothing. That enough truth to suit you? Here is a great award-winning film and a snappy title to grab your attention. Unfortunately, the two seem incredibly mismatched. What did you learn tonight? I always protect myself. What's the rule? Always protect myself. It's the story of an aging boxing trainer and an amateur female boxer who come together to help one another realize their dreams. People see me fat, say I'm pretty tough. 
girly, tough ain't enough. It's a heartbreaking, wonderfully crafted story that seems totally unrelated to the title. Million Dollar Baby could be the dramatic story of a couple that spends a fortune to clone the infant child they tragically lost. It could be an awful spin-off slash reboot of The Six Million Dollar Man about a cyborg baby who fights crime. It could be about a baby kidnapped for a million dollar ransom. Sure, it wouldn't be as good of a film, but at least the title would fit. I can't be like this, Frankie. Not after what I've done, I've seen the world. Number five, Free Willy. See, Willy's a case, a very special case. Hey, will you look at that? We finally get a film that actually is a kid's movie about an animal. Except that title looks all wrong. Let's free Willy! We'd love to find out what this movie is actually about, but there's no way we're typing free Willy into Google. The likelihood of getting a screen full of unsolicited photos seems way too high. Ask him for your help. In reality, the narrative follows a boy's relationship with an orca named Willy, and his fight to free him from captivity. Free Willy. We get it. Makes sense. You know what doesn't make sense? Naming the whale Willy. You are just asking for trouble. You ever see him jump that high? Things can happen. Number four, the squid and the whale. You married? No. Nope. The whole thing's very complicated. There's no better way to pass the time and have a laugh than throwing on Sharknado, or one of those equally hilarious terrible mockbuster movies. However, about 30 minutes into this movie, we were troubled by the lack of squid versus whale combat. We're going to separate. You're not going to be leaving either of us. We're going to have joint custody. Frank, it's okay. In fact, not a single member of this family going through divorce had been devoured by a whale or torn apart by a squid. My mother said you don't have a very good model for relationships because of your parents. What? Your mother doesn't know anything. Wait, this is an indie family comedy drama? No squid versus whale carnage? It turns out that the film is actually named after the squid and whale diorama at the American Museum of Natural History, which is shown in the film. But seriously, way to trick people into watching a respectable film. I thought I could do better. Better how? I don't know. Number three, The Silence of the Lambs. What did you see, Clary? What did you see? While this movie may not be our number one pick, it definitely takes the title for most hilariously misleading. The second movie released in the Hannibal Lecter film franchise, it shocked viewers by presenting not one, but two of the most memorable, depraved, psychotic villains in film history. How could anyone use skin lotion again after hearing Buffalo Bill's instructions? It rubs the lotion on its skin or else it gets the hose again. And Anthony Hopkins' role as Hannibal Lecter was nothing short of masterful, in the most terrifying of ways. A census taker once tried to test me. I ate his liver with some fava beans and a nice Chianti. The Silence of the Lambs, however, sounds like a quaint period piece about a family of sheep farmers carving out a life for themselves in the pastoral hillsides of New Zealand. Not a dude carving the flesh off of young women. Please. Please. <laughs> Number two, Cinderella Man. I have to believe I got some kind of say over our lives, okay? You know, that if things are bad, that we can change them, we can make things better for our family. Hollywood loves reinventing fairy tales, and who can blame them? Why pay for the rights to new intellectual property when all these classic stories can just be reinterpreted in new, modern ways? You get hit every time. Feels like I'm getting hit too. And I'm not half as tough as you are. So what do we got here? A gender role reversal in an otherwise overdone story. Great, let's get a big name in the role of Cinderella, like Russell Crowe. Sounds like a hit. Oh wait, it's a boxing movie. They say the paper's getting all sorts of letters from people saying you're their inspiration. Like you saved their lives or something. Why do boxing movies have such misleading titles? Cinderella Man was the nickname given to real life boxer James Braddock after he beat Max Baer. So you know, just your classic rags to riches tale. Winner! And the new world <laughs> That's a Cinderella story, all right. Just not the one anyone expected. She's got to stop some of those left hands. See any getting past my head? <laughs> Before we unveil our number one pick, here are some honorable mentions. And as they both sink beneath the waves, a frog cries out. 
Why, it's just sting me, Mr. Scorpion. Hello, Raymond. You should feel a little more relaxed in your favorite Kmart clothes. Tell him, Ray. Kmart sucks. I see. This is my best friend. By best friend, I mean we occasionally grunt and stare awkwardly at each other. Who the hell are you? Well, I, I'm, I'm a romance a novelist. You're what? <laughs> what are you doing here? Granted, she's not my first love. Granted, she's not my great love. But she sure as hell is my last love. Number one, Ghost Dog, The Way of the Samurai. Hello, I'm Bob Solo. I'm on Westside Realty. I have an appointment with Mr. Vago. First off, let's get the big disappointment out of the way. There is no ghost dog in this movie, but that's okay. Legit martial arts films always invoke animal imagery, like Enter the Dragon. They're gonna whack you, ghost dog. If they don't find you, they're gonna whack me instead. Probably gonna whack me anyways. We'd even say that the title fits perfectly with true samurai cinema classics, like Lone Wolf and Cub or The Throne of Blood. But no, it's a surreal crime drama starring Forrest Whitaker. It's a hell of a big bear you killed there. The titular ghost dog does live by the way of the samurai, but it's while working as a hitman for the Italian mob somewhere in the United States. He uses guns, drives a fancy car, and listens to rap. Yes, Ron, we used to sing songs upon Mount Hebron. It's a good film for sure but this title is pure trickery. I've been expecting you. Do you agree with our list? Yeah. <laughs> what film has the most misleading title in your opinion? What's it called? Pineapple Express. For more top tens with honest titles published every day, be sure to subscribe to watchmojo.com. Okay.